I am Tejas Kumar, and I'm a developer relations engineer at Datastax. Recently, we shipped an application that crawls the contents of any web page, so any web address here, or you can tap on one of the suggestions and it generates a quiz for you using AI. It literally creates a quiz out of Wikipedia's page of current events, and you can answer questions, and in the end, you get a score, depending on how you did. Turns out I got one out of five. Story of my life. And so you can then share this on social media or you can play again. This application was built using Datastax technology, particularly one key technology called Langflow. Langflow is a way where you can represent each component of your application visually as a diagram and then expose it over API. We use other Datastax technology like AstroDB under the hood, but Langflow is the single API that powers everything in our application. In this video, we're going to look at Langflow in depth at how we can achieve something like this. Indeed, we're going to look at how we created this app using only Langflow. To do that, let's go to Datastax Langflow right here. And now what we have is a bunch of projects, but let's just create a new one to understand what's happening. It will be literally blank. So what do we need? We need to get some text input. This is the URL from the user. And then we need to crawl that URL. So we'll take URL from here and we'll just connect the text with the URL. And this can be literally anything. Let's, let's, do, um, let's do my website. And then we connect that over here. And now we fetch the content from the URL. But what does that look like? Let's take an output. Let's do a text output just to see what this looks like. And we'll connect the data. Notice we can't connect the data and the text because they're different types. This is records. That's how we know it's red. And this is text That's how, by purple. So we need some way to convert the records to text. Thankfully, we have a, a helper for that, a parser. Um, I let's just search for it parse data here we go it is a helper indeed so now what you can see is we get data and we can put the data in any type of template but really we just want the text so we'll parse the text and output the text now we can go to the playground and we have the text input and we run the flow and what we should see is the appropriate output so we go to outputs text output this is the content of my web page indeed it's just a bunch of text Okay, that's great. We're actually getting the text content from a web page. Now what we need to do is break it down into chunks. And, and the reason we break it down into chunks is because each chunk can be ranked for similarity to a user's query in isolation, right? So if a user types podcast, then we find the chunk that represents podcast and we surface that the most using AstroDB's similarity search. Okay, so we need to chunk this text. How do we do that? Well, before we parse the data, let's actually delete this. So we get the content from the URL. We'll actually, let's let's get that back. We'll parse the data into text. And now between the output and the parse, we can add a chunker, um, a split text. This will help us take, yeah, look, we don't even need parse data. So we take the data input and we break it down into text chunks of this size, a thousand characters, and they overlap by 200. Um, our, my teammate, Phil Nash has a great post and article on chunking. We'll put links to that appropriately so you can find it. It's a great topic. So um, the separator is where do you break your chunk? We're going to leave that blank. And now we get chunks and we need to parse these chunks back in the text for our text output. Um, so let's go back and get our helper. That was the parse data. Okay. And again, we're just going to get chunks now and we're going to visualize these as text. So we'll do that. We'll run the flow. And now if we go to our output, we have text output and it looks the same because it's just, again, it's just chunks that became text, but we indeed have chunks of a thousand characters. Okay. So what do we do with these chunks? Well, now we need to put them in a database. So let's go to our vector store and add AstroDB. And this is Langflow hosted on Astra. It's astro.daystacks.com slash Langflow. So um, it's all connected. I have my application token already. I just choose a database. And that's it. And I take my chunks and I put them here into ingest data. Um, I could uh, choose a pre-existing collection or I could just make one. So I'll make a collection called um, demo. Its dimensions are 1536. That's the dimensions of the um, text embedding three model. We'll create the collection. And now just as we create the collection, we can use it. But again, we need to generate vector embeddings and store them in our collection. So how do we do that? Well. Um, we need a embeddings model. And for this, we can use OpenAI. So if we come over here, um, we see we need an embeddings model. So let's go add one. Let's do embeddings and we'll choose OpenAI embeddings and we'll choose text embedding three small. This is perfect. And we'll just, that's it. 
So now we're going to store our text contents in AstraDB. The next step is to actually pull it out, query it when a user queries, and then use it to generate the quiz. So how, how might we do that? Well, we can um, use the same component to retrieve data. Let's take a look. So what we can do is have a prompt. Let's find a prompt. Um, it's in prompts. Let's find a prompt. And we'll say, you know, um, interesting skill topic. I don't know, something like that. That's going to be the basis of our quiz. So we'll take this prompt and, and, and leave it for now. What we need to do is get search results out of here, right? And so we'll take this prompt and connect it to the search input, just like that, okay? So now we're gonna search for this stuff. And then we get the results. What do we do with the results? Well, we break them down into text and use them to generate a quiz. So, okay, we get some results, very similar results. So let's take the helper that we saw, which was parse data. We'll get these results over here. And now we can generate another prompt, right? Um, the prompt this time is for the LLM. So let's go to prompts, choose prompt. And this prompt is a rag prompt. So given these pieces of context, uh, context, that's a variable, generate a quiz in JSON with this schema. And we'll just say the schema is you have, oh, that's a variable, you can't do that with this schema, um, it has a, a question, 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 which is a string, correct answer index, which is a number, and answers, which is a string array. Now this is probably gonna think it's a variable, so it's not gonna allow me to do this. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, so we can just not have these should be good enough for an LLM. Okay, great. So now we have context. We'll take the context from our database, pass it to the prompt. And the last thing we need to do is get an LLM. So we go to models, open AI, and we'll pass the prompt messages. Input, let's use GPT-4 Omini, this is great. And now let's go to the advanced settings here and turn on JSON mode so we only get JSON. And also leave a system message. You only respond in valid JSON following this schema yeah that's perfect okay and now we have a chat output i believe is what we want right so we get the json we just connect the text over here this is it this is our flow and now if we go to a playground let's test it out i don't know that this is actually going to work but we have the text input which is my website and um did i create a collection i think i did yeah it's called demo all right let's do it um and then we'll hit play and now it's thinking and the LLM is generating and at some point we'll have a actual JSON quiz response that we can use in any front end. Indeed, that's what we do use in a front end. So here we go. So as you can see, this is actually valid JSON. Curly bracket questions is an array and question answers, correct answer index. What is Tejas Kumar known for? Definitely not playing the piano. And so we have questions. And then we just consume this in a front end. Okay, but how can we now consume this in a front end? Well, there's this API button, right? And so we click on API and look at this. So we, we generate a token. So we get this token and using curl or JavaScript or whatever it may be, we just copy this and paste it in an application. And that is actually the basis for do you know your stuff? It's this quiz thing we looked at here. Let's look at the code for that. So if we come over to get questions, that's exactly what we're doing here. Um, let's maybe get rid of the side panel. Uh, let's go to get questions here. And this is what we're doing. So we um, fetch from our Langflow URL with our API key. We pass the text input the URL and we get a bunch of stuff. Well, there's some console logs here for debugging, but ultimately we're just console log the response and serve it. And then we get the questions array which we return. That's literally all we're doing. And using that, we can create the quiz app we referenced in the beginning. I hope this has been helpful to understand how Langflow alone can help you create really powerful AI applications, and we can't wait to see what you build. Hey, thanks for watching. There's an accompanying blog post to this. We'll put links in relevant places, either in the description or somewhere around, as well as the code for this whole thing is on GitHub. It's github.com slash datastacks to find it. Thanks for sticking around, and we'll catch you in the next one.